friend turned killer. When I was around 14 to 15 years old, I would bike around with my 11 to 12 year old brother and friends, enjoying the summer with my brother and his group. I made friends with this cute boy, Dennis. We became fast friends, and we made it a habit to hang out. He and I went to the Valentine's Day dance together, and did all the innocent things kids did with kids. Bike, tell jokes, hang out at his place, and go for walks. He was the epitome of normal and charming. As we got older, we drifted apart, going to different schools and getting into a separate group of friends, and we gradually stopped speaking. Fast forward to the morning after my summer school party when I was 16. I heard a few gunshots in the neighborhood area behind my house. Hearing gunshots isn't normal, but it has happened once or twice before. Told my mom about it, and she said not to worry about it, and called her friend in that neighborhood, and found out what was going on. Turns out it was a hostage situation. A guy had murdered a woman and, unfortunately, sexually assaulted her child in that area, and if I'm not mistaken, a SWAT team or something similar was called for help. It was Dennis, the same kid I used to hold hands with, laugh with, someone who was really normal turned into a monster. He got put away It really rocked the teen community in town, since everyone in town knows each other. Knowing Dennis before this really screwed with me. How can people seem so normal end up doing things this violent? It's been th three years now, and I hope he stays locked up. Be careful who you friend. Okay, this isn't really all that scary. While it was scary in person, it isn't that scary of a story if that makes any sense. This is just more of a warning to others to be careful who you try to befriend. Back in the late 90s, when I was finishing up elementary school, I befriended a new kid named Matt. He was a bit of a strange kid, sat in chairs like he was a frog and talked to himself at times, as well as did other weird things. Fast forward to October of 2001, we were in the 7th grade, and my birthday that year fell on a Friday. My parents told me I could invite a few friends over to hang out and spend the night. My sister told me she could invite our two female neighbor friends, who were sisters, to come over as well, so that she could have some female company. At first, I'd invited two other friends, and hadn't planned on Matt being there. He'd acted badly the last time he'd been to my house, and we weren't getting along that great. If I hadn't felt sorry for him for how few friends he had, we wouldn't have been friends at the time. I told the other two I'd invited not to say anything about the get-together while Matt was around. Matt only had me and my other one friend Danny as friends. Everyone else just put up with him. Anyways, Matt was found out about the party in the morning the day before the party. 7th graders sit on bleachers in the gym on one side of the gym, and 8th graders sat on the other side. My friend Danny kept trying to get me to talk about the party while we were waiting for the bell to ring to go to first period. I tried getting Danny to shut up about the party, as I did not want Matt to hear about it. Matt wound up sneaking up behind us and heard about the party. He managed to whine, his way into me, inviting him to the party, but I told him if he came, he was going to have to follow the rules. When we said it was time to turn off the Super Nintendo and do something else, it was time to turn it off, he agreed, and that was that. The night of the party came, and our guest, our guest, they arrived. For a while, things went fine. We played video games and ate snacks and just enjoyed ourselves. Things went downhill fast after the first movie we'd watched had ended. Matt had brought over the first Scream movie on VHS. We watched the movie and Matt insisted on watching the music video at the end of the movie. We watched it and I go to take it out of the VHS player so that we could watch another movie and relax before going to sleep. Matt insisted on watching the music video again and pressed himself against the VCR, pressing several buttons at once. The player stopped working and I forced them away from the machine so I could see if I could fix it. He was a skinny little thing, so it wasn't hard to do. My back was turned at the time, and my sister and Matt get into a shouting match a few feet away from where I was working on the VCR, standing close almost nose to nose. 
Matt ends up tackling her to the ground and straddling her hips, while restraining her arms above her head and pinning her wrists to the ground. I turned my head when I heard them go down, and when I saw this, I saw Red. My two other friends grabbed me from behind and tried to restrain me, but I was stronger and ended up just dragging them along. My one friend Jason lets me go and gets between me and Matt and my sister. Before I could do anything, Jason kicked Matt off my sister. Matt just lays on the ground and howls the most animalistic howl I'd ever heard a human make. He gets up and runs into the kitchen and grabs the biggest knife we have out of the holder, presses the tip against his shirt over his heart, and starts howling how he's going to kill himself. My youngest sister was around 11 years old at the, at the time, I think. I can't remember her exact, exact age, but she was a mouthy little thing and wasn't afraid to speak her mind. She walks into the kitchen and stands about six feet from Matt, telling him to kill himself if he was going to do it. Scared he was going to stab her, I run into the kitchen and throw her over my shoulder before running back into the den. The kitchen was next to the den, so I stood in the doorway and tried calming him down, but nothing worked. He walked out the front door and stood on the front porch, doing who knows what for about three minutes. He walks back into the house and into the kitchen, before grabbing the phone hanging on the wall and calling his parents. We listened in, as he told his mommy and daddy that we were being mean to him, and begged them to come get him. Now, I, I'm not being mean. He really did call them mommy and daddy. As soon as he was off the phone, he stopped his crying and walked into the den. He packed up his stuff and glared at us, before flipping us off and walking out to the garage to wait for his parents to come pick him up. Now, you'd think the story would be over at this point, but it's... but it's not. The next week at school, he walked past a part of the bleachers where me and Danny were sitting, look up at us and do does the throat slitting signal with his fingers. We tried telling the principal who stood in the gym in the morning with the teacher. She made him sit in the office in the mornings for about a week, but then he was right back to coming into the gym. The day after Halloween, he walked up to me in the hallway. He told me that he'd come into my house the night before and gone things he left behind, that if he wanted, he could now know how to get in and kill me in my sleep. Now, I'd be in the den the night before at the time. He claimed he'd come in the door that was right by the den. I also know he never left anything behind because I looked the day after the party, but still knowing then how unstable he was. I wasn't willing to take any chances. He was still doing the throat slit thing as well as threatening us in the hallways as we passed him, but made sure to say it low enough that only we could hear him, mainly about how he was going to kill us in our sleep when we least expected it. We tried going to the principal and complained a couple more times before he claimed he'd gone in my house. She just done like the first time. The other two times we complained, had him sit in our office for about a week. But after that, he'd be right back in the gym in the mornings. One morning, when I was getting out of my mom's car, my sister, who was in high school and getting dropped off next, goes, Oh my god, he's flipping us off. I look and there was Matt, close to where the door was to go into the gym, glaring at us and flipping us off. At this point, me and Danny had complained several times to the principal already and assistant principal about his behavior but they seemed to feel sorry for him for some reason and just told us to simply, just told us to simply ignore him. So I told Danny about him flipping us off when I got into the gym. We've been talking about it for a few days now and decided to go to the resource officer on our lunch break. We met with him and set up to have a meeting with him and Matt during the next period. When the time came and Danny and I walked into the resource officer's office, Matt Matt was already there glaring at us. Matt tried to deny flipping me and my mom and my sister off, but the officer told him there was a camera outside, hidden close to where we were dropped off. He told him he had footage of him doing it, as well as, if he didn't leave us alone, he'd step in and make sure the school system did something about him. He looked ready to cry, but agreed to leave us alone at the time. He then took a note to get back to class. Danny and I thanked him for doing what no one else in the whole goddamn school was even willing to attempt to do. The officer told us, no problem, and to let him know if Matt bothered us again. Luckily, he never did. He never bothered us again the rest of the time we were at that middle school. Me, 
Danny and Jason all got sent to a different high school than Matt. I don't know if Matt ever got the help he so desperately needed, or if he ever snapped again and hurt or killed someone. I don't think, I, I don't think I want to try and find out, you know? So Matt, wherever you are, let's not meet ever again. New friend ends up being a junkie stalker. So, after reading everyone else's story, I remember something that happened many years ago when I was 16. I grew up in a small country town, and when I say small, I mean small. Max population, 200 people. There wasn't very much to do at the best of times. So when one of our friends in our group got their driver's license, it was pure freedom. We would often buy a box of goon and drink in the car, while our sober friend drove us around to other towns. Living in the country, there's normally around 50 to 70 kilometers to get to each different town. So that's what we would do on the weekends. Drive around to different towns, music on, drinking booze and smoking some greenery. Everyone smokes weed where we're from, just a way of life. Anyways, so one night, we were in a town approximately 50, 50 kilometers from our hometown. We had been at the local pub where a band was playing, and we were the last ones to leave the pub. We all sat in the parking lot next to the local park, listening to music, having drinks, teenage shit. Everyone knew each other, and it wasn't the sort of town where new people would just show up. So, when three, older, Possibly late 20-year-olds came out of the shadows in the park towards our car. It was a bit of a scare at first. It was myself, my best friend, her boyfriend, and my boyfriend at the stage. All the other locals had just left and gone home. It was around... It was around 2 a.m. at this point, in the middle of the winter, friggin' friggin' freezing cold. Now these guys start talking to us and seem pretty cool at first. We were a trusting kind of people, and it was exciting to meet anyone new. They told us they were on a fishing trip and had to come see the band. They asked us if we would mind giving two of them a lift back to their shack, as the driver had drank too much and was now asleep in their van. Okay, no worries, that's what country people do. They were staying at a smaller town about a 15 minute drive out of the center of town. When we got to the shack, my best friend was obviously really uncomfortable and was trying to make hints that we should leave now. Besides, we were only 16 years old, our boyfriends being 18 years old, and we all shouldn't have been this far away from home, now standing in these complete stranger shack in the middle of nowhere. We had a few beers eventually and even shared a joint. But for one of the guys, who I was now just seeing in light, and at this point, I'm starting to think, what the fuck are we doing here? Says to me that he wants to show me something and leads and leads me to the bathroom. Now, but before I can make a sensible choice and say, no thanks, the booze and the weed all completely had totally affected my judgment at this point. Eventually, I end up in the bathroom with a skinny, greasy, long-haired, scarred face creep who then pulls out a syringe and starts tying his arm off ready to inject himself with what I assume was, was some kind of crazy ass drug. I never before seen a syringe or drugs of that sort in my whole entire life. Yes, I did weed, but that was about it. At that moment, I was completely freaked out, but too scared to actually say anything. There I am, standing in some freak's bathroom with now a dirty syringe. My friends all not realizing I've left, and the music so loud, they wouldn't have heard me scream for help anyways. I'm so scared at this point, but there was worse to come. He starts rubbing my arm, saying, you're next. As he's holding this filthy needle in the same hand, I politely say, no thanks, I only smoke pot. As I reach for the door handle, he pushes himself on the door, blocking me from getting out. At this point, I... 
I'm so scared I can't breathe, and no words are coming out of my mouth. Suddenly, I hear my best friend telling my name in the hallway. Getting closer, she shoves the door open and sees my face. Instantly realizing something is wrong, she grabs my hand and says, Come on, the boys are waiting, get in the car. I've never been so relieved in my whole entire life. I, I didn't tell the boys what had just happened, because I knew they would go back there and I didn't want any trouble. I just wanted to go home and never talk of this night again. I had learned a big lesson this night and swore to myself, I never get myself in a situation like that ever, ever again. As I wake up the next morning, I thought it was... I thought it was all just a dream. I was slightly hungover and foggy from smoking pot. I was just so glad to be home, safe in my bed. And as I lay there thinking about what had happened, my mom yells out that there's someone out the front wanting to speak to me. Okay, that's weird. Her voice was edgy too, and it didn't make sense she didn't say who it was. We all knew everybody. As I walk out the front door, there he is, the same creep who I was trapped in the bathroom with only hours before. My mom stayed standing at the door as he says, Wanna, wanna come for a drive? I'm quick to answer no, as I'm looking at him like, how the fuck did you find out where I live? I was absolutely shitting myself at this point. I was also shitting at that my mom was going to find out I was 70 kilometers away last night in this strange man's shack in the middle of nowhere. But I felt comforted by her presence. God knows what would have happened if she was at work that day. He was obviously sensing my mother's concern and my coldness in the situation. He gets at his beaten up van and drives away. My mom asking, who was that? And I just said it was one of my boyfriend's friends. I wish... I wish I had just told her at that point because things things were about to get even more and more scary. I was scared to go to sleep that night and feared that he would come back. I just knew he had terrible intentions. At 2 a.m., our home phone rings. This is in the day where no one had mobiles, just landlines. My mom answers the phone and I can hear her say, Who is this? And then the phone hangs up. Sarah! She yells down the walkway. I'm shaking in my bed. She says, Tell your friends never to call so late, I'm on a morning shift. I just knew it was him. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. Mom left for work at 5am, and I locked all the doors and windows and sat by the window all day, looking through a peep in the curtains. The phone rang constantly. My fear of this man took over my entire life for weeks. The phone would ring in the middle of the night, but only when my mother was on night shift and I was home alone. It's like he had been watching me, and knew exactly when nobody else but me was there. I mean, I never told my mother, because I didn't want her to worry about me and not be able to go to work, you know? She was a single mom, and things were tough. Now, around three weeks after this initially happened, a local kid who I wasn't friends with but I knew came up to me at school and said... Hey, there was this guy at the wharf last night asking about you and asked where you went to school. I thought it was over. But now I knew at that very moment it obviously, it obviously wasn't. When I got home that afternoon, the phone was ringing as I opened the door. I was full of rage as I pick up. Nobody says anything. I start yelling, you fucking creep. I called the cops and they're coming for you. And I hung up. After that incident, I I never got another call or a visit from this creep. And I hope I never do again. So, creepy old junkie guy, <laughs> let's not meet.